about where we are and why we're here. You've got to recap what we learned so far. No. Okay, folks, so this is the most important room in the bunker because this is the cabinet war room. This is one of the whole reasons it's here. This is the meeting room where the cabinet would have held their meetings. Now, remembering what I said about um, there's no evidence of this place, the only pieces of evidence are minutes of a meeting that took place here. So, when this place was being built, uh, Winston Churchill visited to sort of see, watch the construction, and then he decided when it was built, he better try it out. So in 1940, he had an entire, moved the entire cabinet from London, with all their aides and secretaries and the whole lot, moved the whole lot up to here, and held a full war cabinet meeting room in this very room. So all the offices were manned, all the typists tried their typist pools, and everybody was here. That's when we had about 150 people would have been here when we did that meeting. Okay. The ministers also were there upstairs looking at where their accommodation would be, which is at Neville's Court, which is a tower block, well not a tower block, it's a set of flats at the end of Brook Road. Uh, that would have been the ministerial um, accommodation. So they tried that meeting in 1940. Now the reason we know it happened is because the minutes of that meeting are in the public record. It's one of the few pieces of evidence there actually is. And that's why I've got my lovely volunteer here. Because what it actually says in that minutes of the meeting doesn't just describe what went on, it describes the layout of the room. And what it says, there was a large oval table. So Winston Churchill sat in the centre of that table, facing the door. Exactly where my lovely volunteer is standing. So she is now standing exactly where Sir Winston Churchill sat and held that cabinet meeting in 1940. So this is where they held that cabinet meeting. Okay, the minutes of that meeting. After that meeting, the cabinet went back to Whitehall. So Winston Churchill left, and he never came back. Okay. Now there was another cabinet meeting held here in 1941. Uh, unfortunately, Churchill was ill on that day, and he didn't chair it. So it was chaired by Canon Attlee, who was a privy seal at the time. And he, he chaired the meeting. The reason that meeting took place was the Australian Premier, Robert Menzies, was over. And he gave a 40-minute presentation on the Australian war effort in this very room. Mm. After that meeting in 1941, the Cabinet left again and they never came back. Okay. Now, why did they not come back? Winston Churchill didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> he thought it was... The actual words were, in a, a memo that we've seen, it was a piece of useless folly, is what he called it. He thought it was too far out of central London, it was too far away. It was also damp. Now, it's not as damp as it is now, but obviously it's an underground place. Uh, he also, in his memoirs, when he wrote them after the war, he called it dank, dark, far from the light of day. Somewhere near uh, Hampstead, where he put. He couldn't even bother to remember where it was, because it went over near Hampstead. Okay, so he never came back. He decided that he wanted an alternate cabinet room but he wanted one closer to central London. Mm. So what they did, they started looking around central London, and they chose a site on Marsham Street, where they found mm. an old Victorian gas works. When they took all the gas um, cylinders away, they had a huge pit in the ground. So they filled it with concrete and made two huge bunkers that were codenamed the Rotundas. They, now, they are currently have been demolished now, but they sat under where the Home Office sits now. The new Home Office building on Marsham Street sits over the top of the Rotundas. Oh, okay. Okay, so in the rotundas, they designated a room, they codenamed it Anson, and that went operational in 1943. When Anson went operational in 1943, they effectively closed Paddock down, took all the furniture away, and took it to Anson to furnish it there. So this place effectively went on what they call care and maintenance. There would have been a very, very small team here of engineers just keeping the lights on and keeping the ventilation going, but nobody else, a couple of security staff just to make sure no one was poking around. And that was it. That's pretty much it was not used again. Okay. Um, a couple of things to note about the room itself. The room itself was soundproofed. The walls themselves were covered in like a cork tiling that had another covering over it. Some of it remains on the walls. Please don't touch it because it will crumble. Um, so it was soundproofed. We had a hatch at the back, which was another telex room. Again, the people in that room weren't allowed to know what went on in here. It was just for passing messages. The other thing you notice is it did, did have, up until about a week ago, did have fluorescent lighting all around. Oh, Unfortunately, uh, it gave up the ghost and we had to remove it. So it had fluorescent lighting in this room, been one of the only rooms that had it. Uh, it also had double ventilation. It has a, a, a double row of ventilators all the way around. It's the only room, again, that had double ventilation. So why did we have double ventilation? Churchill's supposed to go. Churchill's supposed to go. Not just him. 
everybody smoked in 1914. Mm -hmm. This was about mm -hmm. fog. And remember, these are the these are the leaders of the UK. You know, this was the Prime Minister and his cabinet. I don't think it'd been a very brave man who'd come down here and put no smoking sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they all smoked. Okay, that's probably the reason why. Okay, so that brings us up to sort of excuse me. 1943, with Anson coming online and Paddock putting on care and maintenance. What we're going to do, we're going to head upstairs, see a couple more of the rooms, and talk about what happened after the war with this place. One point of interest on the way out, there's a small room on the left-hand side. You can't go in, unfortunately, because the soundproofing's coming off the walls. That was the BBC studio. Mm. That would have been a small area where they could make recordings of speeches and that to be broadcast to the nation. Uh, unfortunately, so we can't go in there and have a look. We are going to go upstairs, we're going to use the spiral staircase again, like you came down, we're going to go up a similar one. And if anyone doesn't want to do it, now you've seen what's coming, you see one of our guides at the back there, they'll take you up the main stairs. Uh, you won't miss anything again, you'll just see us back up on the next level. Quick okay. question. Go on. How does this room relate with the cabinet war room in well, Whitehall? The cabinet war room there, what they've got there is their map room and cabinet room is one room. Yeah. And yeah. if you go there, it's all set out, all the tables yeah, there, the and the chair. And stuff, yeah. That's how this would have looked, except they had, they didn't have a separate map room. So when was that used? And when, well, this that was, was used all the time. Used. This was okay. only used twice when they came in to try it, because this was the backup. If they'd bombed central London and that building would have been destroyed, been, this, this would have been the backup. This would have been it. But then they created the Martian Street when they did Market Street. So this was 